welcome back to Ninjago News TV. Today I'm reviewing episode 89, The Gilded Path. This episode was an amazing episode, and definitely one of the better episodes we've seen from Hunted. Where I had concern about the plot balancing yesterday, I now have confidence. This episode threw a few plot twists at us, and I'm going to analyze and review the episode. Let's get started. Let's discuss the Ninjago storyline first. This storyline picks up right where episode 88 left off. Dareth is able to get to the base in the nick of time, just to warn about the ambush. The Sons of Garmin immediately attack the base, with Harumi leading the attack. She dons the Mask of Hatred, and I gotta say, I love her with the mask. Kill and Ultraviolet are also there, and they waste no time to fight the Resistance. Realizing they are vastly outnumbered, Nia, Dareth, Skylar, and Lloyd flee in the armored car, while everyone else is captured and taken to Cryptarium. Mistaki additionally escapes by shape-shifting into a rat. However, the trouble isn't over. Garbodon telepathically uses the Colossus to chase after the armored car. The ninja have a close encounter with the giant, and the car is damaged heavily. However, the remnants of the resistance are just able to escape. They all disguise themselves and hide all evidence of their true identities, and they escape into the sketchy parts of the city. Mistake reunites with the group. Now for the first round. We start out with a very powerful Wu dream, in which a young Wu, a young Garbodon, and the first Fujitsu Master are all going fishing. Garmanon complains that he can't get any fish and throws his fishing pole into the water in anger. Wu is able to hook a fish and we hear the first Minjutsu Master's actual voice. Wu wakes up and he discovers that he has become a teenager. The ninja are stranded in the desert and have started a fire. However, the team is found by Heavy Metal. However, when Heavy Metal discovers that Wu is the son of the first Minjutsu Master, he decides to help the ninja find the dragon armor. He removes his mask and hat and it is revealed that Heavy Metal is actually a girl and her real name is Faith. Faith and the ninja wander through the desert in search of the armor, in which Faith explains the first Pinjutsu master's backstory with the firstborn dragon. It is revealed that the firstborn dragon and the FSM, or first Pinjutsu master, were allies, and most importantly, friends. Together, they created the dragon armor, and the two rode the skies. They hoped to unite the realm, to unite the dragons, Oni, and Dragon Keeper. However, the Oni and dragons refused to let this happen, when the first Pinjutsu Master realized this, he became devastated and left the realm to find peace. The firstborn dragon remained behind, waiting for the first Pinjutsu Master to return, but he never did. The team is still moving through the realm when they are encountered by Daddy No Legs and Muzzle. The teams engage in a fight and the Dragon Keepers are quickly defeated. It is then that the Dragon Keepers find out that Heavy Metal is a traitor. Ninjas steal their vehicles and ride off into the distance. For once, we're not left off with a cliffhanger. This episode was simply amazing, and I have quite a lot that I enjoyed about it. The Sons of Garmanon fight at the beginning was really fun to watch. Watching the Elemental Masters face off against the Sons of Garmanon was super cool. In addition, I love that Harumi wore the Mask of Hatred. The mask truly amplifies the evil side of her character, and I love seeing her wearing it. The Colossus chase of the close running with Garmanon was also really amazing. We also get some more clarification about Mistake's true abilities. And yes, I think that she's most likely Oni by this point. The episode seemed to emphasize the fact that Oni could shapeshift, and after all, Mistake was shapeshifting. The Wu flashback was very powerful, and we got to see that even as a child, Garmanon had a bad temper. Not to mention the first Pinjutsu Master's voice and appearance in the flashback. After eight seasons of not seeing his physical appearance in a flashback, I think it's probably about time. Heavy Metal, or Faith as I should now say, was incredible, and she's got a wonderful character. We got some understanding about the character of Iron Baron, and that he controls the entire community and forced Faith to hide her identity. We also learned about the backstory of the Firstborn Dragon and her connection to the First Pinjutsu Master. Now for things I didn't like. This was very difficult for me to find a flaw with this episode, as I found everything to be really well done. However, I wish that Iron Baron would have been this episode, but that's the only flaw I could really find. We did get some indirect character development of on Iron Baron, but not direct character development. We had some development through what Faith was saying about Iron Baron, but I would have much preferred to see him actually on screen. But yeah, that's the only thing I can find that I didn't like about this episode. I want Iron Baron to have his own spotlight in the season, and by not including him in this episode, I think that's kind of taking a step in the wrong direction. Now for my final thoughts. Let's talk plot first. As I said in the beginning of the video, this episode did a wonderful job balancing storylines. There was enough action and character development and such in both realms, so that did well. As I said in my con section, I did want to see Iron Baron in this episode, and I'm truthfully a bit bummed that he didn't appear. I give Plot 2.25 points. Now for characters. Faith slash Heavy Metal really stood out for me. Wu was also incredible in this episode. I give the characters the full 2.5 points. And now for action. This episode had plenty of action. 
and the Sons of Garbada fight to the heavy metal plot twist, this episode had it all. Full points for action. And lastly, emotion. There was definitely a lot of emotion, from Lloyd and Nia losing the majority of the Resistance to Wu's flashback. There were a lot of emotionally powerful scenes in the episode. I give emotion full points. My final score? I give this episode a strong 9.75 out of 10 points. This episode is wonderful and takes a spot as my favorite season 9 episode. I had a near impossible time trying to find any cons through this episode, but in conclusion, I definitely did want to see Iron Bear in this episode and was bummed and let down not to see him. So yeah, in conclusion, this episode was really strong, it had a great plot, amazing characters, lots of action, and some subtle emotional scenes also, so yeah, I really love this episode. Thank you guys for watching, if you enjoyed, leave a like, subscribe, share with anyone and everyone you know, I will see you next time.